Whereas during the giving it stage, the teacher is focusing on presenting information. And during the getting it stage, the teacher is acting as a guide. And during the using it stage, the teacher is challenging students. And during the proving it stage, the teacher is facilitating the creation of a project. While assessing, the teacher is always focusing. Focusing on the learner and focusing on the learning. Assessment means that the teacher is gathering information so that um, he or she can decide what to do next. Helping students also to become aware of their own progress and their own performance so that collectively they can make decisions about what will come next in the, um, in the unit that they are um, in the midst of doing. Uh, another way to describe this assessment stage would be goal setting, both for the teacher and for the students. During the goal setting, of course, the teacher is also continuing to collect data. And you'll remember that we have the assessment going on during all of the stages. Sometimes we say that the teacher's very best forms of assessment are through the teacher's eyes and the teacher's ears because you can see students' facial expressions, you can tell if they are puzzled or troubled or frustrated, and you can also hear what they're saying and know whether you need to intervene. Uh, as you're collecting that feedback information, we often think about observation, conversation, and product. Observing what you can in terms of what the students are doing um, the products that they create in terms of projects or uh, even worksheets or other tasks during the course of a unit and the conversations that you have with them uh, both the, those that could be in written form where they self-reflect and you have a chance to read or those um, incidental conversations where you're always asking them how they're doing. That means that the anecdotal records that you keep are very, very important as are um, the opportunities that you have to determine or to hear about students how they're doing. And we call those typically the I can statements. So I can statements are statements where the students um, identify what they think they can do and how well they think they can do it. The, the, the statement might be I can conjugate a verb or I can introduce myself to a stranger. The question might be, how frequently or how well? Always, most of the time, sometimes with support, not yet. And so we want to have a sense of the student's self-perception so that we can also help change that self-perception, if they can do something especially. However, many teachers, because of time, do ask students to produce products but may not give students opportunities to create the same product several times over a two or three month period. And we want to think during assessment about consistent performance, not just the ability, for example, to do a self-introduction once, but can they do that same self-introduction in a more expanded way several weeks from now or several months from now, or even at the beginning of the next school year. As we move into creating specific um, uh, measures, we want to think about the very nice acronym SMART. That means looking for specific uh, criteria that are measurable, that are attainable by the students, that is, that are realistic within the time allotted, within the time allotted. Often, we can take that criteria and convert it into a rubric. No matter how you collect data from students, you must make sure that they also are reading the, and checking the feedback that you are providing so that uh, they can be making progress. Um, other tasks that teachers might consider doing, if you're running a task-based approach, you want to be thinking about pre and post tasks self-reflection, and you might even engage in learner contracts. Now, through all of Be Slim, the teacher must be developing a repertoire and consistently developing their PCK or pedagogic content 
knowledge.